On every meal, fish forms part of the menu. Fish provides proteins to the human body, yet poor plastic waste management seems to contaminate the fish. A study done in Tanzania on the presence of microplastics in the African Great Lakes shows that one in every five fish in Lake Victoria has ingested plastics. When the plastic um, breaks down into smaller pieces, what happens? Eh? And then we need to be concerned. Away from these bigger bottles, when they break down into smaller pieces, they could be a danger because some studies have shown that they end up in fish. Plastic is a common material used in many products and it is found in every home. So, plastic exposure is a guarantee for everyone in the world. Plastic pollution on land and water has become a concern and in the East African region, there is uncontrolled plastic waste management. It affects both land and water sources. When you go to these areas near the, the lakes or the rivers, you tend to find lots of caveras, lots of plastic bottles. And for one reason or another, they, they, they end up in our systems. Urbanization has changed the way people live their lives. Plastic is cheaper and eases packaging, thus increasing plastic waste in the water sources. Meals and snacks are wrapped in plastic because it is considered safer method to preserve food. So, as much food is consumed every day, plastic waste dumping also accumulates. Most people going through water bodies dump waste directly into the water. Sometimes the wastes contain plastics that pollute the lake. On the other hand, people consume water bottled in plastic containers and straws which are non-degradable. These are washed into water sources whenever it rains. The fish also feed on the plastics. There was a, a study which was done by ta Tanzanian scholars. For them, their design was to sample the fish in the market stalls. They were looking at the presence of, uh, of microplastics. So they sampled the tilapia and the nail patch, which are the most commercial species on the market. So they just went randomly in the market and were sampling fish species from the market and test analysis for microplastics and they found that for each of the fish species they had had a process of microplastics an indication that even as human beings we are even if we are caref careful how we are getting the microplastic either through drinking water because we cannot live without drinking water this is Masese fish landing site along the shores of lake victoria in ginger city lake victoria is Africa's largest freshwater lake and second in the world. It is shared by Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania with a surface area of approximately 59,947 square kilometers. An estimated 53 million people live in the Lake Victoria Basin where they earn a livelihood out of fishing. The communities are exactly similar. There is no country you can say this one has gone ahead and is doing polluting the lake more or this one is doing this. They are very, very similar in everything. Masese Fish Landing Site also is located closer to the garbage disposal site for Ginger City. So it has not been spared by garbage pollution. Since we look at Lake Victoria, we also look at the water where the fish stays. So we look at the fish, water for fish production, and look at the water in which the fish lives, the health of the water. We have seen changes, especially in the areas that are affected by which we have polluted waters. We now have some areas where it is very difficult to find any densities of fish. There is no clear research about plastic waste disposal, but at least tons of plastics are washed into the lake annually whenever it rains and an additional by communities living and working near the lake. You will find that along the shores they are filled with plastics. Most of the plastics will stay there in the lake and disintegrate slowly and remain there within the lake ecosystem. And because of the nature of the plastic, it takes many decades for it to disintegrate. 
This is where plastic waste pollution on the lake starts. Scientists warn that fish species like Nile perch and tilapia feed on the microplastics, which in turn are eaten by humans. Even if you are ready to eat the fish, at least you will get the microplastic from the, from the water. So this is an issue which everyone must look at, not just to say, okay, maybe let, let me leave for the other ones, the other ones maybe who are concerned, oh, me, me, I can maybe stay without. They admit that there is still some reckless waste management when it comes to plastics. Plenty of them end up in Lake Victoria waters. People are aware of the danger, but without knowing the cause, they cannot contribute to clearing up the lake. Pollution and the multitude of microplastics are choking the lake and shutting off this economic engine for the three countries. Plastic pollution seems not deliberate and consumption of fish may not be accidental, but there is a danger. This is a study we haven't done. Um, uh, I think the, the preliminaries from our work was to just find out when we're talking about microplastics, what are we talking about? And then to categorize them and then to find out the likely sources of these microplastics. That was the, the gist, but we still have more work to do in as far as, yes, in other areas they found out that the plastics end up in fish. Lakes and all other water bodies must be protected from pollution and address mismanagement of the plastics ending up in the lake. The effects of post-COVID-19 on communities living around Lake Victoria are clear as government sector budgets were cut, thus affecting service delivery. The, the money which they allocated on garbage management, it is little. It cannot help us to, to manage to, to manage this garbage collection. There is some kind of marginalization, not only in Ginger City, but in most local governments, uh, environment, uh, uh, natural resources counts last, not first on the list. There are microplastics eaten by fish in the African Great Lakes. Nutri fish study on microplastic pollution in the surface water of Lake Victoria indicates that polyethylene often used in bags, wrappers and films, contributes 60% of analyzed microplastic pesticides, thus making it the biggest of the plastic pollutants of Lake Victoria. Interactions between plastic and inorganic pollutants will be felt along the fish value chain. And uh, our neighbors, I think there was a study in Tanzania where they found some plastic particles in the digestive system of the fish. What that means is something that we need to take keen interest. But uh, that alone, I mean, it's not about waiting for us to find what it means. I think um, we have to be proactive in terms of how do we solve the problem because it gets out, before it gets out of hand. Much of the pollution is microscopic plastic particles that come from polythene bags, plastic sacks, cosmetics and pharmaceutical products Communities are the biggest polluters. This calls for the intervention of policymakers and a law that protects the waters from plastic pollution. Next, scientists can collect data and water samples to understand the extent of the plastic pollution on the lake. These issues of pollutants are coming from the catchment. So the first issue we think about is first of all to look at catchment management. For example, if we look at these other pollutants like nutrients, Ginger District and Ginger City are working on a comprehensive long-term solution to build a circular economy so that the district and city solid waste system improves waste management. Uh, we, have, we have come up with a draft ordinance which we presented to the Office for the Social General for Guidance. They have returned their comments. We are now going to present it to Council to pass it with amendments and then we sensitize the people or rather we launch it and implement it. So in that way, it becomes illegal if you don't sort your waste before you declare it. Uh, the companies which collect waste will be licensed under by NEMA, but will also be permitted under this ordinance of Ginger City Waste Ordinance 2020-2022.
When we come up with the policy, we shall sensitize the community about the proper garbage management. The policies raise community awareness on proper waste disposal and management. We have been sensitizing people to separate waste because waste is gold in some way. Because if you sort out, for example, the plastics, you can resell them. A, a kilo of plastics which are sorted in now ranges from 500 up to 1,800 if it is clean. So it, we were encouraging people to sort out plastics and uh, we are lucky that we have some factories which are recycling plastics. Because right now, if you don't integrate environmental issues into your development planning, you, you are assessed, you are given marks, and if you don't perform those, those marks, then the grant you get is reduced. So there the government is moving and things will continue to improve. We are not yet at the levels that, that are very alarming, but we should not wait to get there. In other words, yes, we have found microplastics, and the likely sources are these, but then let's control before, we should not just let that, let's control the sources of pollution, of, micro, of microplastic pollution before it gets out of hand.